Prof, you tweet. I pray this morning, everyone hearing me of in this service today, let their life turn to life of profiting in the mighty name of Jesus. They that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. Because they are your sons, I pray for the leadership of the Holy Spirit who will lead them to a place of peace and comfort, a place of salvation and prosperity. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Please graciously take your seat. Amen. This month, the banner before us is sufficient grace. Uh, we started the teaching this year from Zechariah 4, verse 12. Not by might, not by flesh, not by might, but by the of God. Praise the Lord. But by the Spirit of the Lord. Praise God. And we will continue that series. Captain to the advancement by the Spirit. This morning I'll be teaching briefly on the topic. The profiting of the Spirit. The profiting of the Spirit. I'll revert us back to where we started on Wednesday. And then conclude very, very quickly. Uh, the Spirit of God is giving to everyone to make profit with. And that is why if you are desirous of the Spirit of God, you discover that you make profit in life and you also will begin to experience life. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life, but to be carnally minded is death. So the profiting of the spirit will bring us to the arena of life. In the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 12. Romans 8 verse 12. Let's go through it very, very quickly. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. I say Romans 8, 5 to 12. Romans 8, I'm reading from verse 5. They that are after the flesh, do mind the things of the flesh. And Paul is talking here to the body of believers. Praise the Lord. Do not allow anyone to sleep by your side. You get it? Praise God. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the, the things of the spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death. Praise the Lord. But this, to be spiritually minded is life. To be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity, is an enemy, is in conflict, is in a fight, is in a disagreement with God. For it is not subject to the law of God, no carnal mind accept the things of the Spirit, neither indeed can be. So they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his own. He doesn't belong to Christ. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness, the righteousness of Jesus. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ 
from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwell in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, but to live or to live after the flesh. Praise the Lord. Apostle Paul was just explaining the necessity of the spiritual life and the benefit of living a spiritual life. See, see people who are carnally minded, they are prone to death because we are born of the Spirit. And the Spirit of God is given to us to make profit with. By death, it refers to both mostly spiritual death. And anyone who is not spiritually alive will suffer even in the fiscal. Because what happens in the fiscal is root in the spiritual. Whatever happened to you in the fiscal has its root in the spiritual. So anyone that is spiritually dead, automatically the fiscal life, the material life, the social life is defective. That's why being alive spiritually is fundamental to a successful fiscal life. Praise the Lord. Everything you are a spirit, and your foundation is spirit. And the Bible says that is why he said that look, anyone that is of God has the spirit of God. Anyone that is of God has the spirit of God. And Apostle Paul say we must de desire the spirit, and Peter say desire the sincere milk of the word of God. We are not of them that are carried away. We are no longer strangers and worshippers of idols that are dumb. So he's giving this understanding very uh, clearly. And if you, I want to join these two scriptures together with First Corinthians chapter 12. I want to match these two, explain them side by side, and we'll go. First Corinthians 12 verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I will not have you ignorant. Concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you ignorant. That is, the special endowments or supernatural gift of God. That is the life. See, I don't want to keep anyone ignorant. That is, it's very important that a believer should desire a believer should desire spiritual gift. You know that you were Gentiles carried away into these dumb idols. Praise the Lord. Carried away into these dumb idols whom you did not know and you do worship. Even as you were led, misled, but now you are believers. And here I say, wherefore I gave to you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus that cursed, that no man can say that Jesus is Lord but by the Spirit. These two things cannot be operating in your life at once. Anyone that says Jesus is Lord has the Spirit of God in him. Nobody can call him Lord. And Paul is explaining this to the church so that the church, a believer will know that look, don't underrate yourself. You already have a measure of the Spirit of God in you. That is why you can say Jesus is Lord. So you are already a child of God. And as many as receive him, he gives them the power to become the Son of God. Of God. You are not a child of God by your work. You are a child of God because you believe that God has sent Jesus to die in the place of your sin. And in his place, because of the work he has done, you receive salvation. 
you receive forgiveness. That's why you are saved. And because you believe, that is why you can now say, Jesus is Lord. So anyone that say, Jesus is Lord, has the Spirit of God in him. Praise the Lord. Let me escape. And then Jesus did not just end it up. He gives gifts. Ripon say he talk about the gift he has given to the church. For instance, by using your head, you know perfectly well that the Spirit of God will never prompt anyone to say Jesus is them. No, will anyone be inclined to say Jesus is master without the insight of God? And then in verse 4, God's various gifts are handed out everywhere, but they all originate from God's spirit. God has various gifts that he has handed over everywhere on the earth and handed over to everyone. There is an endowment of the spirit in you, and that endowment of the spirit is meant for you to profit with it. There is a grace of God. There is a gift of the spirit that is in you. There is a gift of the spirit that is in you and is given to you to make profit. And they have different operations in verse 5. God's various ministries are carried out everywhere. And there are distinctive varieties of service administration. You see, meaning there's nobody in the body of Christ that can say that, look, there's nothing God has put in me. There's something God has put in you that the body of Christ can benefit from. There's a gift in you. The mistake people make is that, oh, they don't see themselves as ministers of God because they are not pastors. No, everyone in the body of Christ is a minister. Because there's something given to you to minister to others. That is the meaning of a minister. Amen. Are you getting me right? Everyone that is saved, there's, a, there's an endowment of the Spirit of God that is in that person that to bless other soul, to build another person up. And thereby, you become a minister. And if you know that this gift has been given to you to bless others, you will not allow it to lay latent. You will not allow it to lay fallow. If not, you become like the story of those people that Jesus gave talent. Especially that man that has one talent that went to hide it. Because he felt that, no, 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 there's nothing in me. Is it not only one? Praise the Lord. There's nothing in me. Is it not only one? So he went to hide it. Because he felt what God had given to him, what the, the master had given to him, is not good enough. He feel, you, you feel that you are not a pastor. So why should I stress myself in the things of God? I'm not a pastor. I'm not an assistant pastor. I'm not a coordinator. I'm not this. I'm not that. That is exactly what that young man did. Because the first person was giving five, another one was giving two, and he was giving one. And God will not reward you according to the quantity. He's rewarding you according to your faithfulness, to the task he has committed to your hand. So if you are called to be a singer, to be in the prayer unit, a call to make the place neat. That's what the Bible call, call say, gift of administration. Even somebody to arrange things well is part of administration. Are you getting me right? How to administer things. A gift of administration. Say all and all is given that the people of God may make profit with it. Look at what verse 7 says. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to everyone to profit with it. Um, manifestation of the Spirit is given to someone to profit with it. Look at what a uh, message ver version will say. And I will analyze it. Say, each person is given something to do that shows who God is. Each person is the body of Christ. You are given something to do. Amen. Will you this morning ask God, what am I to do? 
Let me say something this morning. Essentially, God has not called you to beg, to plead with him to give you something. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been delivered to you in and through Christ Jesus. So the pursuit that we need that look, this person is giving something to do that shows whom God is. So God wants to show whom He is through your life. He wants to manifest His power. He wants to manifest His glory. He wants to manifest His authority through your life. Everyone gets in on it. Everyone benefits. Praise the Lord. That through what God has given to you, everyone gets on it. Everyone benefits. And say all kinds of things are handed out by the Spirit to all kinds of people. All kinds of things. Including that which we are looking for. All kinds of things are handed over by the Spirit to all kinds of people. So there's nobody in the body of Christ that is useless. Is somebody hearing me this morning? All kinds of things handed over to all kinds of people. No matter what kind, whether black, white, young, old, women, men, poor, rich. Though there are no statutory poor people in the church. Who believe that? There's no, there's no statutory poor people. By statutory poor people, I mean those whom God had designated that this one remain poor in the church. Do you agree with me? There's nobody, there's nowhere in the scripture that God has designated certain people in the church to be poor. Uh, someone is asking me, he say, but the, the Bible say, Jesus say, the poor, you not lack the poor in your midst. That is true. Come, oh, praise the Lord. The poor will come. And by the time they hear the good news of the gospel, because he has, was anointed to preach to the poor. So by the time they hear the good news of the gospel, the favor of God will begin to transform their life. That is what the book of Luke 4, 18 to 19 to 20 says. Acceptable year of the Lord. Well, that's not my dwelling topic on it. That's the way I'm dwelling this morning. But I'm saying that the Spirit of God brings profit in. And all you need or require to do is faithfulness where he has assigned to you. Imagine that young man living his own because he fell, there are not multitude, there are not five people. And when the master came, he rewarded the man of five and the man of two equally, proportionally. And he would have rewarded him the same way. But he felt this is insignificant. I can't do this. So the gift of the spirit is for profiting. And a believer ought to desire, a believer ought to pray with passion for the gift of the Spirit. And then, how does this take place? Then we should be able to walk, to be spiritually minded. You cannot desire the gift of the Spirit when you are not mindful of the things of the Spirit. If I may ask us this morning, what is it that drives us most in life? What are the things that move us most in life? Are they not the carnal things? Are they the things of the spirit? How much of our energy, how much of our passion do we put into spiritual things? Praise the Lord. Going back to Romans 8, praise the Lord. Getting back to Romans 8, to just oppose with what you have seen 
or checked in the book of Corinthians, we are going to have this. Praise the Lord. Are we in Romans 8? From verse 5. Romans 8. Praise God. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. So that's why I say, what is driving you? What is driving us? Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle, but everyone get around exercising it. So what do we do? For those who are according to the flesh and controlled by its unholy desire, set their minds, set their minds on those things which gratify the flesh. Verse 5. We set our mind on those things that gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit and are controlled by the desires of the spirit send their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. That's what Amplify is saying. So I want you to say to me, so so you need to separate yourself and to know your priority. Remember, it's when you set your mind on the spirit that the manifestation of the spirit, you begin to make profit from the manifestation of the spirit. Because the spirit is to instruct you, the spirit is to lead you, the spirit is to counsel you, the spirit is to guide you, the spirit is to comfort you. Say, I will send to you another comforter. Who will teach you? Who will guide you? Who will reveal the truth to you? Are you getting right? That was the prayer of Jesus. His party word. In John chapter 14, 16, 17, that say I go is expedient, it's important that I go so that but I will ask my father if I'm from 14 to 15 to 16 to 17, he was talking about the spirit, about his going, so that the comforter come, so that the guide will come, so that the counselor will come, so that the instructor will come. He said he will receive of the Father and he will reveal it to you. Hey, is somebody there? Get me this morning. Did you see the role of the Spirit? He will, re he will receive of the Father and then he will do what? He will reveal it to you. He will receive secret. Secret of success. Secret of prosperity. Secret of breakthrough, he will receive from the Father and then he will reveal it to you. That is why the person of the Spirit makes profit. Say, Job says, when the secret of God was upon my life, he did what? He said he did food. Isn't it? He enjoyed prosperity. He did fit in all. He enjoyed life. In butter. So, when, so it takes the secret of God for you to enjoy prosperity. And it's the spirit of God that will receive of the Father and reveal it to us. That's why look at that verse. He said, if we passionately Pursue the things of the spirit. He said, those who passionately, then they, they will know the secret of God concerning every matter. There are businesses you feel is good. For the Bible says, there are ways that seem right unto man, but the end thereof is the way of death. The Holy Ghost will tell you, hey, son, don't go. You are human. You are limited. You can't 
beyond your eyes or beyond what you hear. But the Spirit of God, the Bible says, He knows all things. The Spirit that knoweth all things. He will receive from the Father and whisper to you. Praise the Lord. Some years ago in the university with a friend, and I were staying in a house. We returned from school, and then about 7 p.m., we were about sleeping. Then I had a knock of the spirit go back to the campus. I look at it. Usasa, that is an estimate. We have come to a friend's house, and a friend traveled. We had access to his house. So we stayed there. Cook, ate, well, tomorrow morning we move back. And then I had go back to the car. I pick up and both of us left immediately without any argument. That night, robbers came to read. Praise the Lord. Did you know what attracted them? I was using to wear a suit. I didn't start it to, to, uh, today. So the very this man that is wearing a coat should have money. So when they came straight, they came to my door. Because they had seen me in my black coat and tie, not knowing that there was no copper inside. In the hot weather of Zaria with my tie. But you can never know that I don't have money. I didn't have money. Boah, boah, boah. They broke the door and there was nobody. The neighbors, you know, this copper thing. The neighbors reported me to my brother. Your brother was aware that things were coming. He ran alone. He did not tell us. Because they didn't know I could leave for campus about 7, 30, 8 to 9. No. What happened? I heard the spirit leave now. Go back to the campus. He will take secret and reveal to you. When danger is looming, he will tell you, live here. He say, you hear a gentle voice. You hear a voice behind you saying, so the spirit of God is a talking spirit. It's a saying spirit. That's why you need to keep your spirit alive. And that is when the grace of God will be sufficient. So you nurture your spirit. Praise the Lord. And how do you do is to have a passion. Is to have a fellowship. Is to have a passion. I've told you another time when I was driving and I was going on a journey and I gave my car for a check. In an attempt to repair it, they did not key the shaft. Praise the Lord. Mechanic. May God help them. They did not key the shaft. And I was running, overtaking trailers, and noticing what I arrived to Kerefi by Mutra Mohammed Bridge, the first smaller one. No vehicle at my back, no vehicle at my front, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, Reduce your spirit. Reduce your speed. No pothole. I look through my mirror. No pothole. No vehicle. But I mean, nevertheless, I apply brake and I roll down to about forty, waiting to hear at what speed he would like me to move. And there, the tire pull. It enter. It just went to wedge that bridge. That's when the mechanic he says, "Sir, they didn't kill your shaft." God, you are faithful. And when your tire pull, you have no control of the steering. It takes you to. So if it were when I was overtaking trailers in the middle of it, it would just take you under it. But the lesson is this I had reduce your spirit. A small few, you say something told me not to do, it's not something. You have the spirit of God. Once you say Jesus is Lord, you have the spirit of God. Anytime you have a notch in your spirit, don't stop. It's not something. It is the spirit of God. Praise the Lord. 
And many people have run into dangers because they ignore this something speaking to them. This teaching this morning and this month is to know that the Spirit of God is in you, the Spirit of God is alive in you. Anyone that says Jesus is Lord has the Spirit of God. And if you surrender to know more of Him and to develop a passion, your life can never be in crisis. Because there's nothing that is not open and naked before God with whom we have to do. And there's nothing he will hide from you. Look at verse 6. But to be carnally minded is dead. You hear that? To be carnally minded is dead. Those people that don't mind the things of spirit are prone to death. Easy death. Because there's no instruction. No guide. There's no one to say, don't go. No control. No direction. If there's anything they don't know, they move blindly. To be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Another translation say, obsession with self in this matter is death. Is dead end. I pray you not end up in a dead end. Attention to God lead us out into the open. Giving attention to God, giving attention to the things of God, it leads you into the open, into a spacious, free life. I pray that will be someone's experience from today. Because, because that is because the mind or the flesh with its carnal thoughts and purposes is hostile towards God. He does not submit himself to the things of God's law. I pray today that we begin to desire the things of the Spirit. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And if you cannot please God, how can God bless you? So your desire, the desire as children of God, who want to make progress in life, is first of all to please God, is to desire a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, ah, if I were alive when Jesus was here, my life would have been better. No. Your life would have been better. Your life is better now than when Jesus is here. Is it okay? Your life is better now than when Jesus is here. Because Jesus say, it's better I go. Isn't it? He said, it's more important. He said, it's better for you, for me, to go. Because if I don't go, the Holy Spirit will not come. But I'll ask the Father, who will send you this, the Holy Spirit, who will teach you, who will guide you, who will lead you into all things, and who will abide with you forever. Say so he will give you another comforter. If you, I want to round off on the book of John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Praise the Lord. It's Jesus who is talking about the power of the Holy Spirit and what he's meant for. And I will pray the Father. He was talking of his going. I will pray of the Father and he shall give you another comforter in the place of me. So don't miss me at all that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth Amen. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it saith him not, neither know him not. But you shall know him, for he dwell within you, and shall be in you. Let somebody say, I have the spirit of God in me. It is spirit of truth. It's my counselor. It's my guide. Is my teacher, is my instructor, he will not mislead me. I submit myself to his leadership today. Can we just rise up and speak, Holy Spirit, I receive you, I submit myself to your leadership. I submit myself to your leadership. I will not be carnally minded. I pray this morning that you I pray this morning that you operate in my heart. I submit myself. You reveal 
you receive the truth from the Father and you reveal it to me. You reveal it to us. You receive the truth from the Father. You receive the mind of God. The Bible says he knoweth the mind of God. He is the one that knoweth the mind of God. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, reveal to me the mind of God. Reveal to me the mind of God. He knoweth the mind of God. He knoweth the mind of God. It is spirit that knoweth the mind of God. He receive of him. He receive of him. He receive of him. He receive of him. And tell me the mind of God concerning my life. So if you're asking the mind of God concerning your life, Lord, reveal to me the mind of God concerning my life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Reveal to me the mind of God, the will of God concerning my life in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. This is what many Christians do not know that they are moving and progressing in ignorance. Somebody want to know the mind of God concerning his life, say, I'm going to see a prophet. Many times they go to see a magician. Praise God. Who don't who never who does not ever have anything to do with God? But Jesus said the Holy Spirit is there, He knows the mind of God, He will reveal, He will receive of the will of God and reveal it to you. I was driving from home yesterday and I carried someone, a cousin of mine, and we passed through somewhere. He said, Oh, this is so 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 person. Do you do you do you know what they say? Two persons collaborated it. A cousin of mine, I went to them by my cousins as we were going around, and they say something. That man had died. He can he could call anyone out. He say, hold your ear. When you hold your ear, oh, you say, open your hand. You, you can see ear rings. Are you getting me right? And they were talking about it. They were laughing and say, oh, the man wasted time. What did that? If it were now, all he needs to do is to go to Abuja, Porta Court, or Lagos and make suit and say he's a prophet. Isn't it? A prophet that is bringing your rings from your life. What will you not give him? Magicians. Magicians. Isn't, uh, isn't it? And this is what the Christians are calling prophets. They say, do you know something? You try to say, they planted your enemy, planted iron earrings in your stomach. Magicians, he will just invoke a spirit, put your hand, say, Where I bring out. You can find earrings, you can find stone. And I laugh. He was not even a Christian, no. he was a Muslim. Of course, there's a trading video of a deliverance, a Islamic deliverance minister. So, lay hard and falling is no longer exclusive of the church. Demonic spirit. Most of those things they call prophet are demonic spirit. The spirit of God, the operation is, is stated clear. Maybe next week we will see the operation of the spirit. Are you getting me right? And there's none of them that looks like what is happening on the mountains and the valleys. There's none of the operation of the spirit. Praise the Lord. You want to know the mind of God, embrace the ministry and the fellowship of the spirit. He said he will receive of the father and reveal to you. If you will hear a word. You will hear instruction. Keep your spirit alive. Don't be carnal. Say the spirit of the Lord is the candle. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. So if your spirit is not alive, there's no way God to strike matches. Even when he's speaking to you, you know not hear. It's like having your clothes or a material soaked in water and you want to put uh, light. Will it catch? That's why I say you should not be carnally minded. But if your material, uh, let's I want to burn this cloth. It must be left dry, isn't it? Strike a matchstick. It will burn. Will it burn? Because it's free of equivalences. 
is free of water. To be carnally minded. But if I go to deep it in water and I put fire, no matter the amount of fire, will it cast fire? That is how. So any believer that is not hearing God is not because he's not a Christian, it's not because God is not speaking to him, but because he has soaked the spirit in water. He will not know when God speaks. From today, ask, Lord, I'll be spiritually minded. I'll be spiritually minded. So that whenever you speak to my spirit, I will hear. My spirit is your candle. Lighten it. Speak to me. Instruct me. Let me hear you. Let me know when you are speaking. Give me direction. Receive the secret from God. The secret for my advancement. The secret I need in my family. The secret I need in business. The secret I need in ministry. The secret I need in career. The secret. Lord, is secret that distinguishes people. Is secret that set us people. Yeah, the secret. Let the secret, let the secret be revealed to you this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ask for his secret. Ask for his secret. Ask for his secret, Lord. Ask for his secret. Ask for the secret of God. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, reveal the secret for the next level to me. There's something you need to know. There's something you need to know. The Bible says, I have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has he entered the heart of any man what the Lord has reserved for those who love him. Lord, reveal that thing to me by your spirit today. The secret in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let me say something. Anyone who is guided by the Spirit has no competitor. You are you, okay, let me say, you are always ahead of your competitor. Those doing the same thing with you will only be copying. Because as you are there to copy, you have received another secret. It's when you now start it, they say, ah, it's working, oh, then they So, secret is what distinguishes, just like Job said, when the secret of the Lord was upon me, he did what? He would dip his feet in butter. Secret. When the secret of the Lord was upon my life, I dip my feet in butter. I enjoy the best of life. I pray from this day, you will enjoy the best of life. There, there are secrets in anything. In business, in family, in career, in trade, in whatever you do. That secret that you need to excel by the Spirit of God will be released on you today. Receive the baptism of the Spirit of God. Receive the baptism of the Spirit of God. Receive the baptism of the Spirit of God. His secret, secret takes you off. And the secret is by his spirit. He received of the Father and revealed to us. He received of the Father and revealed to us. He received of the Father and revealed to us. In the name of Jesus, what you need to know to move forward, this week you will know. It will enter your spirit. There will be a nudging in your spirit. It shall be clear to you in your spirit. You will not take the path of death. You will not take the way of losses. Because you hear clearly, son, turn back. You will not take the place that will land yourself in trouble. If there is any trap set for you, you will jump in. Because your feet are guided. Your feet are guided. Your feet are guided. Any man, any woman who is said to do you will not succeed. Because you know, you hear clearly that this business look good, but it is not of me. Your spirit is alive. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray that the secret that will take you forward between now and next Sunday, somebody will give a testimony. I hear this of God. 
in my vision, Lord. It can come to you in a nudging. It can come to you in a killer vision. It can even come to you in a dream. It can come to you by God speaking to you clearly. Whatever method, but it shall be clear to you that this is a step that you go. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. The Lord do you go. I see your profiting. And the whole world will see your profiting. The spirit does not offer losses. He said the manifestation of the spirit is giving that all may profit with it. The spirit of God does not offer losses. No loss. No loss. No loss. In Jesus' precious name. The Lord bless you. And do good. Father, thank you. Thank you for your spirit. We choose today to be spiritually minded. We receive life and peace. Thank you, Holy Spirit, because we receive from the Father and you will reveal to us. Even this week, that which we need to know to be distinguished for lifting, for profiting, reveal to everyone. Thank you, Lord. No one's feet will go in the, into the place of danger because you are always there to guide and to lead and to instruct. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Just put our hands together and say,